My name is Jim Holyoke, and this project was called Holocene. This project was in the Faculty of Fine Arts Gallery at Concordia University in the vitrine that goes along the York Corridor between the school and the subway beneath. And it lasted for 33 days. I lived basically, well, I, would, I didn't live in the vitrine, but I was in there every day for 33 days for between two hours and 17 hours a day. Uh, it happened over the duration of January to February, so the dead of Montreal's winter. Um, it's, it was 115 feet long and 10 feet 9 inches tall, with five pillars each 9 feet around. So it was the largest drawing I'd ever made by myself. Um, it resembled a mural, uh, but even more so a natural history diorama, and also a terrarium, because I was like this specimen in there, the only human inside what was otherwise a realm of imaginary, endangered, and extinct animals. It was also an indoor forest and a geologic timescape, so there was mountains, swamps, ocean, underwater, and uh, clear cuts, mangroves. The Holocene is the current geologic epoch. It began 12,000 years ago at the end of the Pleistocene. And what marks the Holocene as different from other epochs isn't so much geologic changes that have happened, but uh, human impacts on the biosphere, the land, and the atmosphere. Why I wanted to call this project Holocene uh, is to draw attention to the current mass extinction which is the sixth mass extinction in the history of life on Earth. The last time this many species disappeared was 65 million years ago at the end of the dinosaurs when a meteorite hit the Gulf of Mexico. But the extinctions now are caused by us. Rather than a scientific diorama that would, in a linear fashion, describe animals through history back from now, this one is all mixed up between animals that exist now, that are extinct, and that never existed at all. There's deep sea sharks, pterodactyls, a diprotodon, a, a tyrannohorse, a passenger pigeon, uh, lost cats, gigantopithecus, a bluefin tuna, giant cedars, ferns, mangrove trees, a black rhino, uh, a Galapagos tortoise, polar bears, fungus, a thylacine, and an Ogopogo. And the only human in there is me. There's a few reasons for doing an immersive project uh, over a, a long period of time like this. It resembled a marathon. It felt like a marathon to me. Um, part of it was to think of myself as a human animal and to present myself as a specimen. Another reason was to change things over time. So the the drawing grew a lot. Uh, my project is about things becoming and evolving and then disappearing. And so there's a lot of things in half-finished or half-erased states where some things actually left the scene while new things arose. Before this project began, I sent out a call for submissions for postcards for people to send in pictures of real imaginary or extinct animals or real or imaginary places. So people sent in ghouls and gargoyles and endangered seaweeds and all kinds of things. Um, and I asked people, it was open, you could write about whatever you liked, but I asked specifically for um, memories, dreams, fantasies, ideas, and wishes, reflections on the state of the earth, uh, things that might worry people. And what I ended up getting was mail from all over the world, but also a lot of local stuff where people would see the exhibition and also the other postcards and be able to have a conversation with me and with my, my piece and with the other messages that were ending up in there, pasted all over the glass. This project was really hard physically and mentally, a lot of sleep deprivation, but the hardest thing was it was difficult socially because I was being watched a lot of the time and it was a strange thing to intentionally put myself on display but then do everything I could to forget that I was on display in order to be able to concentrate on my drawing. 
Um, so I often uh, wore headphones and listened to a lot of audiobooks, partly to indicate that I was uh, not really available to talk, but also to help me get lost in my own world where I would do long shifts in there. And the books kind of kept me company as well because the glass was a significant barrier. I would feel separate from people even if they're a few inches away on the other side of the glass. And at the same time, I felt like I was under surveillance all day long. One of the goals of mine over the course of this project was to think about what it means to be an animal, a human animal, and to, ref to try to learn a little bit more about what it means to be a human. So every day I set a obligation to myself to, remind, to remember that I am an animal, displaying animal behavior, having animal encounters with other people who are walking around. And what I ended up thinking about was the particular humanness of our hands. We have primate hands that are capable of incredible dexterity. Probably one of the most important qualities of humans is our ability to work collectively to cause incredible overwhelming problems but also the diversity of the way that we live. I'm just displaying my own individual human animal behavior, but humans behave in so many different ways, which is a good thing, because it also means we have a variety of ways of thinking about the troubles that we've created and potentially solving them collectively. We'll have to do it collectively. And I thought that was a hopeful quality of the human animal after all.